Welcome to CSB Television. April is National Jazz Appreciation Month, National Poetry Month, National Autism Awareness Month, and International Guitar Month. In the month of April, we will be sharing videos from the past that has anything to do with guitars, autism, poetry, and jazz. Let's take a look at today's video. You're watching The Ready Writer, a show where I get to speak to writers of all different genres, mediums, and experiences. The Ready Writer. Are you ready? Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Ready Writer. I am your host, Casey Bell, and today's authors are mother and son team, Tisha and Nicholas Glover. Let's get started. Um, was becoming an author something you've always wanted to do, or is it something that came a part of your life later on? Well, for me, um, I have wanted to be an author since I was in first grade. Um, I wrote a little story in first grade, and my teacher, uh, it's been announced to me, ended it into a little contest, a little writing contest, and I won an honorable mention. And from that point on, I knew that, that I wanted to be an author. And I remember being in the second grade, and when I was in the second grade, it was the first time that I ever saw a book with an African-American character. And so it just stood out to me that, oh, this is a book about a little girl who looks like me. And so in the second grade, I said, you know, I want to write children's books. I want to write books that have pictures with little girls that look just like me in it. And so um, my background is actually in education. So fast forward 20 years later, I was a second grade teacher. And as a second grade teacher, I saw that there was still a lack of representation of books with African American characters. So that that re sparked that fire that I had when I was a little girl that I realized this is something that I wanted to do for a very long time and that fire is still there. So at some point, I really need to do this. Um, that was my experience as far as um, deciding to be an author. What about you? Um, I, I don't know. I've always had a creative mind and, um, it just kind of writing is just kind of always been there. I always like to see other people's works as far as, um, books and media, movies, all of the above. And, um, I always wanted to add my own taste to you know, that craft. And I think that's where my enjoying for literature began. Awesome. So you, I can see you um, both wrote this book together. What was, what caused you to want to write this book? And did you have any hesitations, any fears, or did you jump in knowing that no matter what this is going, you're going to do this? Well, we were in those initial months of lockdown in 2020, and uh, I just happened to come across um, an advertisement on Facebook that said, have you ever wanted to write a children's book? And it was actually a five-day challenge um, to writing your first children's book. And so each night I logged in and I felt just like it was destiny, like this, this is the right time for me to do this. And this is meant to be right now. And so um, I took the course and it was actually a five day course um, on how to publish, how to self publish your own children's book. And I was within the course trying to decide about what I wanted to write about. And I was brainstorming and I was thinking, what do I know about? And I thought, hey, I have two sons. I'm going to write about my sons and, and let them be the characters in my book. And then once I started writing, I realized that we have a unique perspective on um, brotherhood and on sibling relationships because my younger son has autism. 
So I said, oh, wonderful. This, this will be great. It will give us the opportunity to share a story, a family story about autism written from the perspective of a brother, a sibling. And it also would just allow the opportunity to, to celebrate their special relationship. So it's been wonderful. And, and do you want to share how you became a part of the writing? Well, um, I, um, during COVID, we had this, um, just this, you know, bond, family bond, where we'd always just, you know, go into the other room and just talk about like, oh, what's going on? And then I found out about the book and she was asking me um, some, my thoughts on Davis to get the brother perspective of a brother with autism. And so um, I was like, you're writing a book about me and, you know, I don't have my full input on it. I was like, I want to write as well. So that's how the um, book became a collaboration work. And it was, I was a little hesitant at times to release a book about autism and having the audience be, you know, for people to understand autism. There's always that um, notation, there's perception that you want to, you want to tell the story in a right way that reaches other people from a personal level, but also to make sure that it's hitting the nails on the head from a, since it is a children's book and educational standpoint, so that it, um, it is understandable for other children to recognize that, you know, this is autism. Thank you for sharing. So you've already answered the next question I usually ask, which is how do you how did you find out how to publish a book? Um, so you took a five day course. Within that course, was there anything you learned? And obviously during the process of publishing the book, was there anything or things you learned that kind of took you off guard? You wasn't aware you needed to know that. Um, anything challenging to learn how to do? Um, what are some of the things you've learned that you would definitely pass on to someone else just learning how to do this? Well, <clears throat> I knew absolutely nothing about publishing a book prior to the process. So I can say everything that I learned was, was new and valuable. Um, I didn't, something that was um, most valuable to me was learning how to use freelance sources and learning how to use different freelance sites to, um, to contract out services that I didn't know how to do myself. That was completely invaluable. Um, our We found our illustrator through a freelance site. And <clears throat> our illustrator actually lives in Pakistan. And so that was a, an interesting process. I'm getting a little dry, sorry. That was an interesting process in that um, we've never spoken with each other. We've communicated back and forth via email. And I sent him pictures of my family, sent him very detailed descriptions of um, my expectations for every single illustration. And we corresponded back and forth via email. Um, once he did a sketch, he would send it to me and say, what do you think about this? And I would say, change this, change that, I love this. And we went back and forth with that process for, um, it was maybe three weeks to a month um, to get the book exactly the way we wanted it illustrated and formatted. But, but that was the biggest thing that I learned about how to um, use resources and, and find resources uh, through freelancers to help me do those services that I just wasn't aware of how to do myself. And um, what about you? Did you learn anything in the process? Um, what I did learn that I was very surprised by was um, the, the course was taught by a Black lady, and one of the statistics that she showed us was um, that um, there are not a large percentage of children's books aimed towards um, a Black audience featuring, you know, Black children, and um, one of the statistics she showed was that um, there are more books about animals and um, inanimate objects than there are Black children. So it was a strong motivator to do the book to 
to represent that audience. Wow, I, did, I didn't know that. It's funny you say that, though, because there is a, I don't remember her, her name offhand, someone on Instagram who, you if you have books with um, for bl uh, Black children audiences, she'll, you get, you pay a fee and then when she sells them for you, she's kind of like a bookstore, a broker, so to speak. So she put on Instagram recently a video saying, um, oh, so you made a book with animals and you're sending it to me? Like, that's not what I, what I want. And it's true that um, they rather, it's either animals or um, more Caucasian. And it's time for us, because obviously for us to do something about it. And um, it's our problem. We need to solve it. And so I'm glad that you chose to um, write this book. So it's called Davis Speaks. A brother with autism. Um, give us just a little bit about it, um, a, about the the storyline of the book. <laughs> well, it's actually our family story, and we began with the actual anticipation of Davis's birth, and the story progresses to um, tell the story about how we began to see differences in his development. Um, as compared to other children his age, and it follows the diagnosis of him being diagnosed with autism. And along the way, it educates um, the reader about autism, but it also follows the relationship between the two brothers. And I did find that since we've been selling this book, that we've gotten really good feedback from other siblings who have a sibling with autism. And that was something that um, I didn't realize was so unique about our book is that it's difficult. Well, Nicholas mentioned that the low percentage of books or the lack of representation of books with children of color. And it's even a smaller representation of books with characters who have a disability. And so um, I, met parents who have told me that they were just thrilled to be able to share this book with their children uh, because it does follow that perspective of having a sibling with autism and it, it just felt good for them to have that representation and not only to have that representation but to be able to realize that they're not the only people going through um, the situation uh, of having a sibling or a child with autism. So we've gotten really good feedback um, from that perspective. Cool, so is this, you consider this going to be a series of books or do you plan on creating more books um, in this subject? I definitely am going to write more bo books and um, I'm definitely going to write more books with Davis and Nicholas, my two sons, as the characters. I don't know that autism is going to be the central theme of the book. However, um, Davis is a character, so autism is going to be a part of the book. So, um, so yes, I'll, I'll say yes. We'll we'll have more books with Nicholas and Davis, and then there are other types of books that I I like to write as well. That's pretty cool. So I'm not sure where you live and um, what rules and regulations they have um, as far as all the climate that's going on. Are you able to visit bookstores for book signings, um, book festivals? Are you um, setting up any events or scheduling anything for the future? Yes, yes. 2022 has been much better than 2021 as far as being able to see people in person. So um, it's interesting that um, we have been able to partner with several different organizations to be able to sell in, in person. We haven't done, we actually have never done a bookstore. We have partnered with our local farmers market and a local writers group where um, we collaborate and sell each other's books together at the farmer's market. That has been tremendously successful. We also um, have partnered with different autism groups uh, or groups that um, cater to a population of children with special needs. 
So um, there's an organization called Ainsley's Angels, and it's actually a running group um, where there are people who run and push children and adults who have disabilities and are unable to run a 5K on their own. And we've partnered with them because quite a few of, of their, we call them the angel runners are the people who run and push. And then the angel riders are the people who are being pushed in the race. So uh, quite a few of their angels, um, their angel riders have um, autism. So we partnered with them and, and we did an in-person book sale at a 5K run. And that was a, a great success. And we're planning some more as well. Um, we're, we're selling books at another 5K um, for, it's actually the autism walk. It's an autism walk and an autism run. So we'll be um, partnering with the autism walk run and um, setting up a booth there as a vendor. And locally, um, this Monday, this upcoming Monday, because April is Autism Acceptance and Awareness Month. So this month, we're partnering with uh, an autism group within our county. And um, the high school is having an Autism Awareness Day. So we'll be selling books as a vendor for Autism Awareness Day at an event that the high school is having locally. And we've partnered as well with a local um, arts council. So we'll be doing a book signing at uh, an art reception as well. No, it's uh, so much. This is, I think the second time or third time someone told me about partnering with the uh, farmer's market. So apparently that's a thing. Um, so what advice would you give a parent as far as dealing with a child with autism? What advice would you give them when they first find out, like what was, um, you first, I mean, you said you first noticed there were signs of um, something um, was different. Um, for your own experience, what advice would you give someone? Well, I would say um, from the initial diagnosis, I would say first to take everything one day at a time. Something that I struggled with was when he, when my son was initially diagnosed, my mind jumped to what is his life going to be like when he's 18 years old, when he's 20 years old, when he's 30 years old. And there was absolutely no relief or no peace in worrying about that far in advance of the future. <laughs> so um, my first um, piece of advice is to just take everything one day at a time. My, my second piece of advice is to recognize and understand that your child is perfect. He was perfectly designed and perfect, perfectly created by God. And so that's something I tell my son every day, that you are perfect. And that's his affirmation, I am perfect. So that even though um, there is sometimes a stigma associated with, with autism and there's sometimes a, a stigma associated with um, disabilities overall, but I have to remind my son that no matter um, what the standards are in society and, and the challenges that you face every day, you are absolutely perfect. And I love you just the way you are. As a sibling, um, what would, advice would you give to um, someone else who has a, a sibling? Um, the advice that I would give is that their a sibling relationship is always um, it's always a different relationship that you can't explain. It's um, you know a certain bond that certain friendships don't reach. And the advice that I would give is to, you know, develop a lot of patience because there is a different pace that your sibling is developing at. But also to enjoy every moment that you can get because um, it was a long time before Davis did start speaking. 
and before he was speaking, there were different ways that I had to try to communicate to, you know, have that relationship. Like if we went on a walk together or if we, um, you know, just did to, you know, person thing, your events or um, like a park or something, just spending time together is an importance to remind them that, you know, even though it can be frustrating that for you or for me that we're not, you know, where you want to be yet, that um, eventually you'll get there and there's no rush because you're going at the time that you need to go at. Awesome. All right. So my last question for both of you, what advice would you give someone who's fearful of taking the journey of publishing a book? I would say just do it. <laughs> I would say the only way you're going to overcome the fear is to start and do it. Um, along the way, you're going to make mistakes. However, along the way, you're going to learn. And so I would encourage anyone who is considering publishing a book to go ahead and take that step. If, if it's in your heart, then that must mean that you have a story that someone needs to hear. So just do it. And my advice would be to um, always pace yourself, never go too fast, and because you never want to burn out. You want your end product to be exactly how you want it to be, and you want it to represent your thoughts in the best way possible. And to never, to never compare yourself to any, any other thing that's out there before you release what you have because that can be an intimidating feeling and you just end up not releasing anything. So I would say to know, you know, this is what I have, this represents what I want it to represent and it's perfect for me to release. And it doesn't have to be as good as this person's or it doesn't have to be good as this person's because it's good enough for me to release. And just knowing that will prevent a lot of burnout feelings. That is all the time we have for you today on The Ready Writer. I want to thank our guests, Nicholas Glover and Tisha Glover, for sharing their journey. What a wonderful mother-son team. And of course, you as always, thank you so much, audience, for watching. Have a great day. That is all the time we have for you for today. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you again.